Now students will be coming up with three types of solutions. Those involving products, which we're focusing on here, services and environments. And through that, they are going to go and develop processes and production skills. So looking here at years one and two, they will investigate and, or sorry, they don't investigate and define in years one and two, um, this particular stage of processes of production starts in years three and four. But they do start though, generating and designing new ideas and designs for their solutions. So it may be just very simple diagrams. It may be verbally explaining their designs, but the key aspect is to, for them to come up with a range of different possible solutions. So not just coming up with one idea, but coming up with lots of ideas. And from that, picking the best idea, which is the one most likely to solve the problem that they're trying to do. So again, there are a range of different um, possibilities here. Making puppets is a very popular activity. Uh, making cubby houses and tree houses and so forth. Um, and this is part of the design process. Coming up with lots of ideas, generating these ideas and designing some sort of solution. Trying to articulate it either verbally or through a presentation or through some sort of written design. And then the next stage is producing and implementing. This is taking their design and producing it, turning it into reality. Now, for older students, one of the interesting challenges is to swap around designs so that the students don't produce and implement their own design. They have to try to implement someone else's. And this um, highlights the importance of describing your design in a way that other people can understand it and then implement their design. But in the younger years, it's focusing on the materials and their use of, the, of tools and equipment to safely and effectively implement their design. So being able to glue things together, being able to attach things together with staples or um, various other processes. These are the skills that students learn about. And through that, they learn about different properties, how um, felt isn't particularly good for gluing together, whereas uh, paper is really good when it's glued together. So these are different things that students slowly build an understanding of. And there are various activities that students can do, such as making cards or making um, musical instruments. And then we come to looking at how successful they have been. Now we do this through testing and evaluation. Testing is when we look at what we intended to do. So looking back at the design, what we actually decided we wanted to do, and then seeing whether or not that was actually done. And we do that through a process of evaluation. So we test to see whether or not something was done, and then we evaluate how effectively it was done based upon our initial um, intention. So again, for younger children, it's looking at um, their products or their solutions, showcasing them, uh, maybe getting feedback from their teacher, from their peers, from their parents. Uh, commonly have little um, project days where they showcase their work. And then trying to actually see how effective it was. Did it actually work? Did it fall apart? Um, did it stay together? Did it um, move the way it was intended to move? All of these things that students can then test and evaluate. And finally, there's the collaboration and management process. So looking at how well students may work together on tasks. Did they stay on time? Did they run out of materials? Did they cause a mess? Did they use too much material? These are things that they can look at in terms of managing their project and how to manage it better. But time is always an important one. Um, and so forth. So there's a range of different aspects that you can explore and sort of guided projects that students can go through to learn how to manage doing a project more effectively. So see if you can come up with a project that incorporates all of those stages.